Welcome back to Sketching Up. We're at episode 66, two sixes in a row. I am Chris. I am joined by Matt again and Kyle. I'll throw it to you guys. You guys can tell us how you doing today. How's it going? We're getting right into it. So uh, Matt, let's start with you. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm excited for this show. I'm, I'm really sad. You said we we're going to play a game and I yeah. love games like the ones you described. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready. Yeah. We're going to play a really fun game. Uh, we'll explain it in a little bit, but let's go to Kyle. Kyle, how are we doing today? Man, just cooling, just cooling. By the way, Schnabel, real, real quick. My, you know what my aunt just told me? What, what was that? She told me that Becker just closed. Becker College just closed. She said a bunch of D3 colleges closed because of the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, like, can, wow. I, could, I could see that if they weren't making money i mean obviously the lower level colleges just don't make as much money so they're dependent on tuition and if you're going to pay a lot of tuition and not have classes you're going to go to a bigger institution than a d3 um i can tell you that's very interesting i don't know if that's a topic for one of these podcasts but i know but <laughs> we can get that into was just it if you a, want i just no 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 i was just, just thought about you know it that. yeah because you know because you faced on me yesterday i was like oh yeah yeah, yeah so um i went to uh Kyle and I's old stomping ground of University of New Haven over the weekend. And we, we, we went, I went on an actual tour. He went on a virtual tour with me as I went into different buildings and uh, anything that was open, we explored. And it was a lot, it was really fun going down memory lane. And um, it's been good talking to everybody again, too. I think I reached out to everybody that we used to chill with and just about everyone got back to me. So that was pretty good too. So all that was great. So we got a little. That's always a good time going on. Yeah, that's yeah, always a good time. Go, I did that uh, in July. I did go that in July when, a, yeah, when my buddies uh, got married right up, right up the street from Marist, and we mm. all went. Him, his wife now went there too, and so we mm. all went. Um, got there a little early, kind of walked around the campus, saw everything, and you know, it was just you know the nostalgia. the The whole campus is brand new. Like everything that's there was not there when I went there. And it's like, oh, wow, this is, this is sick. Like all these new dorms, they have like across the street, uh, apartments that are for the students. Like I had to live in an apartment, like probably like three miles down the highway. And now yeah. there's one that's walking distance from the campus and it's beautiful. And it's like, oh, the be the be in college again. That would have been fun. Yeah, well, that was what I was. I was. I, I talked to a couple of uh, videography students while I was there, and I was like thinking about how, like, this was almost ten years ago that I graduated. So it was over ten years ago I was on campus. Yeah. You know, it was just bizarre to think about. But it was a lot of stuff has changed. A lot of stuff is the same. Uh, good old U and H. That's good the product of Kyle and I. Good times yeah. there. So the reason we started so quickly is because we want to get right into it today. Um, the first thing I'm going to go and say is um, I have to take a hiatus for a month. I will not be here for the next month. I have work obligations. I won't even be in the same. I won't be in the state that I'm in right now. So I have to take some time. So Kyle will be hosting the next few episodes of Sketching Up. He'll keep the he'll keep the train rolling. The whole time. So, uh, Kyle, do you have uh, do you want to do you have a speech you want to give or anything like that? <laughs> nah, nah, because they know the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> we we've had you host a couple of times with me on, like you open the show, you close the show, and stuff like that. But just now, I think there's no vibe. there's no buffer if he goes off the rails. Like it's just it's just yeah, gonna it's happen. It's debauchery. It's, it's debauchery. just gonna happen. Atomic bomb. Me and Matt is gonna be lit. Just know, Hells like, yeah. Really. Hells yeah. I'm going to come on and let just Kyle run the show. It'll be Who's like gonna... an anime full feel, filled month. <laughs> yeah, if you're a big I fan cares. of anime, February is your month. Oh, like, that's all we're doing. <laughs> February is your month if you're a big fan of anime. Um, not <laughs> anime related, but during the football game um, on Sunday, the, uh, the Eagles and Niners, this is something we've talked about a ton. So I just want to quickly put it in there um they had a new 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 teaser for the mario movie where you actually get to hear seth rogan as donkey kong for the first time 
Did yep. you guys see that? Uh, yeah. What did you think of hearing Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong? I personally thought it was. I thought it was good. I've I have been on the side of I've liked all the voice actors so far, including Chris Pratt. So yeah. what do you guys, yeah. Matt? Let's start with you because you're the you're a fresh opinion. Like yeah. <laughs> they've heard our opinion. So you know, with these movies, you you can't get everything right, and you you you, you just can't. But I'm excited for the premise. Like I'm so excited to see the world of Mario on the big screen. And with the cast, you know, with the cast list that they have, you know, you, you, you kind of scratch your head at some things. But when I saw the first trailer and heard Chris Pratt's voice, I liked it because they it didn't sound like he was trying to be the Mario so hard. Like giving him that Mario accent like super. It was like Chris Pratt's Mario, which, which yeah. I liked. And the premise of them bringing all the game stuff in and, and taking from that new um, – that new trailer where he gets he gets the cat outfit and, and he falls and Which everyone is dope, laughs at by him. The way. Like, I don't know what the hell Donkey Kong's talking about. That's a dope outfit. I know. Yeah, you can't win three D world without and so, it. <laughs> and I think it just it. I got more excited with hearing uh, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. I just it, as soon as I heard it, I was like, "Oh, that's that's Donkey Kong." That that yeah. it, to me, it just it just sounded right. And the same with Jack Black's uh, Jack Black's Bowser. I thought I thought the Bowser was awesome. I, I it, he is that type of guy to to play that role really well, where he can be mean and menacing, but he just has a joke in there in a joking once, way, like. Every, like- yeah, it's like a soft menace. <laughs> it's a soft. Yeah, menace. exactly. And with this type of movie, you need that. And and I'm I'm excited for it. Like I, I I'm going I'm going to go in with low expectations, but I'm going to go in with high expectations with having fun with the movie. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into expectations in a little bit. But Kyle, did you have? Uh, you said you saw it too. Do you have any opinion on that new? teaser we got um not not too much I, anything I did new like, other than the 17 podcasts we've done on this already i, I know right it's like, <laughs> i mean seth rogan being donkey kong is cool you know i thought donkey kong would have been a little different but i mean seth mm-hmm. rogan's cool to me seth so can I, cool. can I can i say something that might be a hot take Ooh. um potential Ooh, I, take, potential I take. love it so Fizzle. charles manuet Right, Charles uh-huh. Manuet is the original voice actor for Mario and Luigi. And stuff. If you had that voice for an entire ninety-minute movie, it, you would be so agitated and annoyed you'd walk out. Yeah, true. If yeah, you that's had why that he voice, doesn't talk that much in the games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So people love the voice of Mario. Like, don't get me wrong. If you've never listened to this show before, or if you have, I am one of the biggest Mario fans you're gonna find. Like, that's why yes. every other podcast mentions Mario. <laughs> we have, but Literally. but. If you had that voice for 90 minutes, you would never watch the movie again. You'd maybe watch it once and you ne- or you would not finish the first time because that voice would get very, very frustrating. And hearing full sentences in that voice would be so painful on the ears and probably painful for his voice. Like there's a re- like you said, there's a reason there's short stints and he doesn't talk that much because and you can't have a full sentence like that. I think that's why we love him as Mario because we love the – the little one-liners he has. Here mm-hmm. we go. Like those one-liners we love. And they're just little, little bits of sound. That's it. They're not yep. full monologues. They're not in conversation at all. It's just, it's just that. So I, I, I agree with you, Chris. Like uh, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. I don't think I could listen to him talking to all the characters for two hours. Like I think I would go crazy. You, you go nuts. And I know you're an avid listener, and I'm glad you're finally on the podcast. But uh, back in 2020, I, brought, I mentioned this on the podcast, but I'm going to mention this as many times as I can because it's amazing. We covered this when it was first announced. Mm-hmm. And I yep. correct, correctly predicted how this was going to go, where Mario was going to be from a different world, getting sucked into the Mushroom Kingdom. I predicted that when they announced this movie. We're going to have to find that clip eventually. Yeah, eventually you're going to have to. But he, even Kyle remembers this because he was on he was on in a couple of times during then. But this was correctly predicted in one of the first episodes of Sketching Up. Um, Connor and I predicted it. This you're, exact this exact thing. So you're Nostra Schnabel. That's what it is. You, you, you yeah. felt it and you saw it in the universe, and <laughs> it, it came well, to fruition. Th- think of it this way: What other way could they have done it? 
That's yeah, really what it, it like, is. Like, what other way could they have done this? Yeah. There's not many Ooh. ways you could have successful, successfully done this movie. Like, you're not going to give Mario's backstory because Mario's backstory is different in a lot of, you know, depending on what mm -hmm. year you're looking at. Or yep. what Mario you're looking at, what iteration of Mario you're looking at. So you're not going to give a backstory. So now you have to kind of create your own backstory to do it. It's almost like a new universe in a comic book. Like you create your own backstory because you've known yep. this backstory or it's like the Joker. No one knows the actual backstory. So in every time they do it, they create a new one because it makes it more mysterious right. and stuff like that. But you don't want to stick to just one. So it, it was kind of really the only way you could do this type of thing. And I, I, the only thing I did not predict correctly is I said it would be real life to animation but it looks like it's just going to be animation in one world to animation in in the mushroom yeah. kingdom which is just as fine but yeah i'm very excited um, april 7th april 7th i'm excited because i'm a huge always sunny in philadelphia fan like that's one mm. of my favorite shows of all time and i love charlie day as an actor and i'm very excited to hear a his luigi more mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think that fits so well with his personality and Luigi. Like, I just, I think that just goes so well. And that's, that's really what I was very excited for is to find out that he was playing Luigi. And I just want to hear his voice more. It's, it's funny you say that because when people were complaining about Chris Pratt as Mario, one of the things you'd get from a lot of people that were like, okay with it is like, you're going to complain about Chris Pratt as Mario but Charlie Day is just Charlie Day. Like he doesn't do a voice either. He he actually does yeah. less of a voice than Chris Pratt does. He's just being Charlie yeah. Day. Like, and nobody yeah. cares because it's Charlie Day and we all love Charlie Day. But Chris yep. Pratt has all the controversies. Well, not really controversies. A lot of people don't agree with his opinions. So they yep. they don't want to be on his side and like, oh, this is going to stink. But like if it makes no – sometimes it makes no like, – Jack Black's putting on a voice. He does He does the best one we've heard so far. But everyone mm -hmm. else really is just being – like Seth Rogen just sounded like Seth Rogen. Like yeah. It didn't sound like anything else. But it fit really well. I will say that. Yeah. I mean it was great to hear Donkey Kong laugh. And I'm just like that's just Seth Rogen's normal laugh you hear on yeah. interviews and stuff. <laughs> <It's just laughs> like, there was Rogen, no change so. to that whatsoever. <laughs> So, so I'll give you an opinion I had on this, and then I want to hear what your opinion is. You can either build off the one I had or if you think it's going to be something different. So I said because it's Illumination that's making the film, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people think that, like, Mario is going to be ruined because they're going to make Mario 1, Mario 2, 3, and just keep going. Um, but knowing Illumination, I don't think that – yes, there will probably be a Super Mario 1, 2, 3. You know, they'll go probably up into 4 or 5 if it's successful, right? But mm -hmm. I don't think – that's how they're going to go. I think the Toads, or and then Kyle, I think you said the Yoshis, right? We said the Toads mm -hmm. or the Yoshis are going to be the one. They're going to be spinoffs that get the, the toads. like just how the Minions the were the spinoffs of Despicable yep, huh? Me. It's going to be the same thing. I personally think it's going to be the Toads are going to start getting their own movies. You're going to see them on the memes on Facebook and all that stuff. Every, every mom is going to repost some weird thing with a Toad at the bottom of it. That's what I think. Do you have, do you kind of follow that opinion? Mm -hmm. Have you really thought about something like that? I do. Like, I think this sets up the world for Mario, okay? And mm -hmm. I think this could be a really cool spinoff. Like, in my mind, I think, okay, we set up the Mario. And we kind of, we get to see the Mario racing in this. And we see yeah. all these other Mario properties. I couldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Super Smash movie. If this is successful Ooh. from Illumination, so you're saying you're, you're saying because if this is successful, we're going to see more properties like this because you can't have a Super Smash movie. Yes, you'd have I, to have a Zelda movie. You'd have to have a Pokemon movie. You'd have to have a Captain yep. Falcon movie. I, mm -hmm. I think I think this is going to set up that world into a bigger universe. You have the Mario world, then you have the Zelda world, and you have the Falcon world, you have the, the Star Fox world, and you have all these worlds that you can build off of, and Mario may be the launching pad for that. Can I, can I build off of your thing yeah, that right. supports your theory? Mario is coming from a different universe into the Mushroom Kingdom. So they've already established with with this movie, the first movie that would be in this whole thing you're talking about, they've already established yep. you can go from different universe to different universe. So right yeah. there, boom. You don't even have to be in the same universe now. They can all be in their yeah. own separate universes and then come together. So like mm -hmm. that like this could lead off to like the it could be 
an, an Infinity War Endgame where it's it's Super Smash at the end of all yeah. these movies versus the hand. It, it could all of them get sucked into that. You know, and you get That's all these theory. different characters because, again, you can build off the Donkey Kong world. You may have Donkey yeah. Kong in this movie right now, but he has his own world. He's he's they, throwing they have the barrels at. No, yeah, they have the whole world. Them. They don't just have Donkey Kong. You see it in the stadium. It, that's definitely a Donkey Kong stadium. His face is on there. You see Cranky Kong. You see all these other Kongs. They're there. And, you can, and then in the, you the, the racing one, they're all there. Yeah. yeah. So you you have all these characters from all over the place. And, and you just have this one movie that's going to set that all up. Mm-hmm. And you can just – it could just branch out and then finish with Super Smash. Oh, that – that was promo worthy. That's definitely the promo for this week, right there. Boom. That that right would be there. it. Would be was, just amazing. Yeah. Just some someone bringing all of those great characters that we love together to beat each other up on all those different maps that they had, which would be and amazing. I, and and I mean, just in that scene we've seen in the commercials, the commercials a couple of times, like they've already set the stage with the floating platforms and everything. So like the stages can mm-hmm. be put together like that so that's a good theory that's a really good theory it will be a long we'll be we'll be well past our prime i would love to see it i just just would love to to see that that would be so much fun to follow it's it's an exciting theory to to to, um to think about in the future there so yeah (laughs) you killed that man i have no comment on that bro you killed that bro bro. like i'm sitting here thinking like i mean that would be lit i'm sitting here trying to think about what world i want to see like i'm sitting here like man the kirby world will be kind of lit yeah, well, 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 well pause. The, like the world, like, oh, the world they need to go next on is Zelda. Yeah, they oh, were build this world. The Legend of Zelda movie would have. That's the that's one true. that'd be the most anticipated because there's so much to that world and so much to that lore. I have four books mm-hmm. right over here that are encyclopedias mm-hmm. of Zelda. There's four of them. There's four of these things. Like yes, yeah, yeah the, I would want to see a Zelda. Too, Oh yeah, I was just thinking about personal favorite. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I think those, I I think all these characters, they're so beloved, where I wouldn't want to see something like a Super Smash or any of them brought in real quickly. Like you mm-hmm. said, Chris, I would love to see them build upon these other characters in, in full fleshed movies because you don't want them to do so like loved. the DCEU. You don't want them to no, start with Justice because- League. I'm getting uh, I'm I'm up to here. I'm up to here and we have what three more days of January and we still haven't heard anything except for cancellations. So I'm I'm losing it. Like I'm hey, I'm like I'm 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 losing it over here. So I, I just watched their animated series right now. I'm on a I'm on a hiatus for their live action right now. I'm kind of Yeah, I'm I'm excited <laughs> for like I'm always excited for their their animation. Like their animation is their bread and butter. That's why yeah. I got mad that they got rid of the new Batman that was going to mm-hmm. go on HBO Max. Like that mm-hmm. is that is like one of the dumbest situations you could put yourselves in because you were so successful in the animation and then you you cut that and you're like are are you are you serious? That's that's where your bread and butter is and it's the guys who created the original Batman animated series that is so loved today that it's it's probably one of the most streamed things on HBO Max. Like you exactly. can't you can't do that. You can't just cut it out. Like it's like one of the four about? shows that got everybody into comic books. You got you got that. You got the Spider Man. It's called Spider Man ninety four mm-hmm. now, right? You got X Men ninety seven, yep. mm-hmm. and you got Justice yep. League. Mm-hmm. We're like the four four big. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's other ones. Um, that were out there too, but those, but those were, were those are the, the four, four big, big ones four. that if you never read comics, you were reading comics after you watched yep. those. That's what got me and into Spider Man was that series. That series same. was so good. Like that's that's it did so well on character building and bringing in all the all of his different characters and and bringing in characters mm-hmm. that aren't specifically for Spider Man, but bringing them in. Mm-hmm. You know, you had you had Blade come in there. Like yeah. no one would have heard about Blade until you saw him there. And then he got the first movie. <laughs> yeah. And then he got the first yeah. movie in Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. one even heard of him before that. So it's just like the it just it's been bothering me. Like uh, because you know we have the new the new animated movie um, it, uh, with the Legion of Superheroes that's coming out. with Supergirl mm-hmm. pretty much the the main character. 
Um, and then they just released a trailer. I don't know if you guys saw it for the, it's like, uh, uh, Batman by gaslight in that universe. And yeah, I, I haven't seen the trailer, but I know it, I knew that was coming out. I yeah. And it, yeah. It looks, it looks really good. I, I, I would, you know, it's bringing in, you know, a lot of different mystical characters, but back in that time, which is mm -hmm. quite cool. So I'm excited about that. And again, like Kyle said, their animation has never missed. Like I've enjoyed all of them. There's some I don't enjoy as much as the others, but like there, it's just they're so much fun to get into. And so, I mean, they they did a great job of connecting all of the past, the New Fifty Two line of characters going through all the Justice Leagues and stuff, and, and then like you got a little Justice League Dark in there, which was cool, and you know you got. You got pretty much a animated DC Endgame as a animation, and it was rough to watch. Like that that movie was like I just saw all my favorite characters just get God. KO'd, yeah, bro. just yeah. KO'd. And then the best part about that was they bring it all the way back to the Flash running back in time and resetting everything. Like that was just everything from the start of Flashpoint to that last movie was just awesome to watch like i thought they did aquaman really well you know they did all these characters really well and then they're just nah we don't want to do that no nah, we're not going to do that like so with, 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 with the animated series that got canceled did, did it get canceled because they lost um kevin conroy or is it because they just decided they're not going to do it like did he record the lines already they, it or got canceled they before they no, they got it canceled before Ken, Karen Conroy passed. But did they know he? Did they know he was sick? Like, did they know he was not well? And they were like, "Oh, he's not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be the same without him. We should just we're canning everything." Anyway. Maybe I didn't look able. into into that as deep, and I will. But I, I I know it got it got scrapped before that. It got scrapped before James Gunn was signed on. It got scrapped way back when. And everybody, they're shopping it around right now for someone to pick it up. Oh, so then it's definitely still a thing. They're just HBO Max. No, mm -hmm. not, not HBO. Um, Discovery is just, yeah. they're axing everything. So, they're axing everything. They're, they're trying to sell off. They're, that's why HBO Max is about to go away. Another thing that we were yeah. very excited on the show when it started, it was like the topic of discussion for like four straight weeks. Yep. And now they're trying to scrap it, everything on it, because they're just trying to sell off all the assets, make as much money as they can. And it's just, nobody wants to buy Discovery Plus, man. Nobody wants it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't want that. That's not, it popped up and I was like, I would never want to buy that. <laughs> can anyone here, and now this is serious, this isn't as a joke, can anyone name one show on Discovery? Is Ice Road Truckers from Discovery? I don't know. I, I, I'll look it up as if so. Ice Road Truckers. Let's see. Ice. Um, um, the what was that penguin thing? Didn't they have like a little penguin little documentary? Ice Road. Hold on. Ice Road Truckers is on History Channel, which okay. doesn't make sense, but no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> the Penguin Show. Yeah, it was like Mar not March of the Penguins. It was some penguin. Maybe it was March. Uh, um, is there Martin something the called? Was a, uh, some a some penguin show? Is uh is there anything called like the Gold Rush? Like it's those people who are still like mining I, for. Gold. I know what Gold Rush is, but all right. So I have a list of the top series on Discovery. Oh, let's hear it. Um, so I don't see. Oh, see, this says Discovery Plus though. So that's not going to work because some of this stuff might not have been on discovery. Like yeah. this says hell's kitchen. I don't think hell's kitchen was on. No hell's discovery. kitchen was a Fox show. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess they must've sold it off. So let's see. These are all discovery plus. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This, this is it right here. Okay. So the top show according to IMDB, which we all know is the, uh, end all be all <laughs> is top gear. Which I have heard of. I do know what Top Gear oh, is. Oh yeah, I do know Top Gold Gear. Gold Rush too. was Gold Rush was also on Discovery, or it is also. It's still going, I guess. Hmm. Um, 
But maybe that's not true because this is Anchorman 2 is Discovery. And that's like an actual movie. <laughs> yeah. So, I think that was put on by Paramount. How, how do we figure this out? Planet Earth. They're, they're hiding it. Discovery's hiding it. Yeah, they're hiding it. They're like, we, they don't, we don't want you to know. We don't want you to know because, because then we can't sell anything off. Okay, guys? So they're probably we're, – we're getting seen right now. Brother Eyes looking at us like, you guys better chill. So Myth, Mythbusters was on Discovery oh, yeah. Channel. So that is oh, – oh, I, I remember Mythbusters. That was a 100% good show. there. Okay. So I'm assuming the rest of these, the shows I'm assuming were all Discovery then, and the movies were just shown on Discovery at some point. Um, let's see. Oh, no. Let's see. Top Gear was on BBC America. So that was not on Discovery. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. Documentary. That's what I was going to say. And then let's try Gold Rush because that's the other big one. That one was on Discovery. So Mythbusters and Gold Rush were on Discovery. Um, I don't know any of these other ones. Oh, Dirty Jobs, I also know. I don't know. Was that on Discovery as well? So I guess they had a couple of things. There's, they're all like, but these aren't real shows. These are just like reality shows. Yeah, that was also on Discovery. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of reality shows mm -hmm. were on Discovery Channel. I guess it's Discovery, right? You're discovering these realities. Yeah. I remember um, the big thing with Mythbusters was the two main guys, they got into a beef and they don't talk to each other anymore. Really? Yeah. I was just looking it up and like they don't like each other. They don't contact each other. And then they tried to, to re, re-bring it in and it's it's the two guys, but like it had to like go through a bunch of mediation for them to do the show again. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I mean, that happens, right? That's like any band. Yep. You see these bands all the time, and the lead singer or something wants, uh, wants well, more money. I don't know if you guys. Does, and then... I don't know if you guys listen, but you saw Panic at the Disco, Disco broke up. Yeah, I've seen that. I didn't know Panic at Disco was a full band. I thought it was just him with different people, like every year. Because you never no. really, you never really see other people like that. I feel like they've had so many different people. Oh, probably they probably had different drummers and guitarists, but I think the main vocal people and the guys who write the actual music were always still together. And after like I think they said it was like sixteen years, they they broke up because the lead so singer is having what a kid. Is Bre oh, wow. Brandon Yuri or something like that is mm -hmm. the yeah he's singer. the one who's having the kid, and he called it quits. Oh well, he's if if he called it quits, then the band is over because he was like he was, the main focal point of yeah. He was the face of the so, band, really, pretty much. So so they didn't break up. So he he is like the main person of the band. Everyone else in the band has left at some point, or he probably just left them behind. Honestly, um, there may yeah. have been someone there still writing with him, but he like was he would just have like he probably just signed people on each year. I I remember watching something about that where like when he creates music it's just him mm -hmm. in like he has his own like studio in the backyard and he like creates the entire thing and then when he goes on tour he just has people come play like he creates everything he creates all the drum line he creates all the guitar the everything and then he like i guess he just has people come play like, like when you said that you're like I, when you said they broke up i'm like what did he like well, <laughs> disappear? You gotta, you gotta <laughs> see this this long this long like Instagram post he put on, and he said they broke up. Those were his exact words. Like there, he's it's ending probably, the band. It's, it's broken up. I I I'm gonna assume that uh, I'm gonna assume that uh, that means that there were people that he was like going with, and he. Uh, there are people he was going with and he decided to call it quits and they're like, I don't want to call it quits. And he's like, too bad. Too bad. <laughs> That's it. Imagine like you're a guitarist and you got hired like a year ago and you go on tour, making that all his money. He's like, God. all right, I'm done. <laughs> uh, <at least laughs> like, your resume is built, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. I played with disco. Panic at the Disco for a year. <laughs> Before we continue Sign on, me. we lost Kyle. I don't know. Hey, we got him back. There he is. There he is. There's there Kyle. Matt and I there just went off is. on a tangent of Panic at the Disco, uh, and Kyle was like, he was too heartbroken, honestly. 
He was too heartbroken. He was like, I can't. Yeah, be a part I think of this. he was. He needed. Like, I, I don't want to hear this there, stuff on a Sunday night. He's sitting there looking at a picture of Brandon. Uh, uh, was it Brandon? Your I just said his name too. He's looking at him. And he's like, If you love yeah. me, let me go. It's the <laughs> no. It's the um. It's down. the uh, Wolverine meme coming. when he has the chain coming. photo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he's just there and he's just stroking the, the picture just the Wolverine. I can't believe it's over. <laughs> Wolverine in the yeah. middle. Love yeah. I just can't believe it's over now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I I, I low key cut the feed because I cried. I'm sorry guys. He, he got up and took and he took off the uh the Panic at the Disco poster he had up in the background. He just <laughs> slowly took crazy. that down. <laughs> I burnt the hoodies. I burnt the shirts. Yeah, it's like I'm done with it's my like, emo uh, days. When that player loses the game for you, like that, he his his hoodies are like those Dak Prescott jerseys last week. <laughs> he just, he just yeah, I can't believe this. Yeah, he ran out back and he just started this. lighting them all on fire. Mm-hmm. I went on Insta Live too, just just to, and while playing their music too, I was upset. Yep. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. You know, well, I, but I think I think we may see some burning jerseys if this this next Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Realm. I was just about to say, there's no better time to transition than right now. Yeah, like we're because on the same if that doesn't, <laughs> yeah, if that if that movie doesn't live up to the hype that it has been, because we got leaked scripts, we got we got pictures floating around with some people that will make people's uh, jaw characters that are will make people's jaws drop. And apparently it's the same guy who leaked the picture of the three Spider-Men for um for No Way Home was the same guy who got these pictures of apparently there are two characters that we haven't seen or heard about in the marketing that are in this movie and it'll make people's jaws drop. And he so, didn't want to say yet. He didn't want to release it yet. So I'm like, okay, you guys are so hyping this movie up again. For starters, clearly new here because uh, we, we don't ride the hype train anymore after Doctor Strange. Thank <laughs> you. Is, Thank you. Thank you. I listened to that one anymore. too because I knew I was talking to the right people. I knew yeah, I was yeah. talking to the right people because they hyped that movie up so much. And I sat yep. through that movie and I almost fell asleep. Yeah, no, we don't we don't hype it up anymore. It's you know the thing is, Doctor Strange was not the worst movie I've ever, I've ever seen, but it was so disappointing because there was so there was an incredible amount of hype built up around it, and it didn't live up to the expectations in one bit. So we do not mm-hmm. ride the hype train like that with uh, with these Marvel movies anymore. We just you go in with no expectations. You go in just wanting to see the how the MCU is going to build. Don't don't expect to see Doctor Doom. Don't expect yep. to see anything. Just go in with the expectation. First of all, there's two expectations you go in. One, how are they going to build the MCU? Two, who's going to die? Because someone always dies now. There has to be a death. Yep. I don't know why everyone has to die now. Yep. I mean, yeah. they just bring them back anyway. There's no reason for it. But it's uh, I'm just no ex. We do not know, go in with expectations. I'm just tired. I'm tired of these people like, oh my God, we may see the Fantastic Four because they've been trapped in the quantum realm and that's how they got their powers. It's like, why are you trying to rewrite the wheel? Like, yeah. I, I, I don't when understand. That doesn't happen, like, and then that, when that doesn't happen, you're up. It's like, it's like when you like, you have someone in your life and you're like, ah, computer systems. Okay. It's like when you have someone in your life and you expect them to do something for you. And then when they don't do what you expected, you get mad at them. It's like you're expecting this to happen. But mm-hmm. like there was nothing telling you it's going to happen. Like that's why I don't read the message boards. I don't read the hype mm-hmm. things. I, when I listen to it, I'm like, that's just a rumor. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. I, I don't have any interest in that anymore because the hype train, the only one where the hype train actually happened was No Way Home. And you know what? I was mad I was following that too because I didn't want it to be spoiled. I wish, yeah. I wish I went in not knowing that was going to happen. Like yeah. I wish I went in not knowing Andrew Garfield and and uh, and Tobey Maguire were going to be there. I would, it would have been so Same. exciting. Same here, and I, you know, for this movie specifically, all I'm going into this movie is to see Kang the Conqueror. 
I think yes. he's one of the best villains ever written in comic books. He's mm-hmm. like one of those he's, – he's a villain you can't kill. You just can't kill him. And it's – and he has such a crazy backstory that will probably put your brain into a pretzel if you try to, to read up about him and to do everything like that. But I want to see Kang the Conqueror. Like I loved him. I love you know, what they did with him in Loki. I thought that was great. Because we already know there's so many different Kangs out there. And to see that first Kang as the good Kang, like, okay, that's cool. Now I want to see the complete opposite of that, of this badass dude who will do anything to get out of the quantum realm, literally anything, and then start go wreaking havoc on the MCU. And that's all I really want to see is Kang. And that's, that's, that's the, for me, that's the hype. I'm just excited to see Okay. Yeah, because I think I think Jonathan Majors is. Yeah, I think Jonathan Majors is is just such a great actor. Like I think mm-hmm. he he's you know um, I saw him in the um, he was great in that uh, that um, sci fi TV show that was on HBO Max. Um, Love was it Lovecraft? I don't uh, know. Hold on, I'm gonna I look it up. Tell you. I know Kang's going to be ripped out of his mind, though, because he was prepping for Creed 3. John yeah. Majors. Is yeah, no, I think Creed he was prepping for huge. Kang, and then he was like, oh, I could do I could do, Creed. I could do this, too, yeah. <laughs> he's huge in the ad for that. Huge in that one. He, he's scary looking. Like, yeah, those those promo shots, it's like, I think Michael B. Jordan, Caleb Monger has got his – got his like real real test coming up <laughs> yeah 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 he does he definitely does mm. um, it's called a uh, love lovecraft country count yeah lovecraft, lovecraft country, country. it's Max, a great so show him on, see him on there uh, i would HBO highly Max suggest it. it's, it's a very awesome. sci-fi yeah before before it gets sold off yeah, before it gets sold off and, and you can't watch it anymore, or, or you have to buy Discovery Plus, which is just as bad as it getting sold off. So, <laughs> one of two ways. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I can't. But, but that's, that's, but yeah, that's what I'm we excited think Batman, for this so. movie. I am too. I'm excited yeah. for the no, MCU it's, movies. It's fair. I, I, just want them, I just want them to go in the right I just direction want them to move forward. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm, right just, I'm looking for this forward. movie to move, move it forward. You know, we, we had you know, phase four kind of, you know, be a cul-de-sac in my opinion. Like we just didn't get anything that just kind of pushed us forward. And now I think this movie is going to do that and I'm hoping it will. And I, you know, I have confidence it will because you're, you're adding the big bad, you know, he's getting, you know, a King dynasty movie. So you're going to have to give him something to build off of from this movie. So I'm excited and I'm ready for someone to die. Well, yeah, and you gotta be ready for someone that because it's guaranteed gonna happen. I think um, about Phase Four, maybe it's another hot take um, about mm-hmm. it, but I think in Phase Four we're gonna look back at it and there's gonna be more. There's gonna be more to that phase that was important than we realized. Just the same way in the beginning. I mean, like nobody, nobody's running back to their DV, to their to their their Disney Plus or if you have the movie of it, you're not running back to watch their first Captain America. You know, nobody really does that. Or Thor. No one runs back Thor that often. But, like, but we're so spoiled because we saw how it ended. And then we went back and we're like, oh, like, all this stuff that happened in Captain America, like, really drove the point mm-hmm. of what happens later on. And we're, we're just, yeah. we're so ready for the end to be here that we're not really paying attention to, like, it's like, oh, there's no none of this, none of this, none of this. Like, what does this have to do with what's mm-hmm. coming up? And. I think we just have to sit back and wait and see what they do. And I think there's going to be some of this stuff is going to become really important um, by the time we get to the secret wars and stuff like that. And we're going to look back and be like, oh, I, I understand what they were doing now. Or maybe not. Maybe we're just going to look back and it's just going to be kind of a blah era. But we'll see. Yeah. That might just be my hot we'll take see. of yeah. we should wait. We should wait until the end of the story before saying it sucked. <laughs> like It's like reading a book and reading the first four pages and being like, Boo! Closing it, <laughs> like yeah. you gotta, 
You got to see it through a little bit. You got to let it build. And it's, it's not, it's a continuation. Yes. But at the same time, it's a soft reboot, right? Like we're getting a lot of new heroes. We're getting a lot of new stories and a lot of the heroes we, we mm -hmm. knew and remembered are, are either gone or they're onto the phase. They're phasing them out. Right. Yeah. So we got to remember that like, this is a whole new chapter or in a whole new book. This isn't a whole new chapter. It's a whole new book. It's like, it's, it's more, it's more like Harry Potter one and two than it is Harry Potter chapter one and Harry Potter chapter two. You know what I right. mean? Like it's like a whole, yeah, it's yeah. a whole new book. There's things that are there that are retained and moving over, but we have an entirely new story of what's going on. I think that's, yeah. that's the best way to compare it. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to go back and see and see how it goes. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. It. You know, I, I, I personally, I'm hoping we get more kind of short movies that don't like, I loved werewolf by night. I thought that was yeah. awesome. It was great. That came out around Halloween. I thought it was just such a fun movie to watch during that time. And, and then I even liked the guardians of the galaxy Christmas special. I thought that was a lot of fun and it was, it was quirky and it, it kind of gave you a little preview of what the guardians have been doing. And I like those little kind of tidbit movies that they're doing. And I hope, that, I hope we get more of those, you know? Yeah, me too. I, I, I like that as well. I wonder if they did the Christmas special because James Gunn's trying to get out of his contract, obviously, because he's going to DC. Um, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was a fun little thing they did. Uh, that one is going to be tough. I can tell you right now, I don't read the hype things. Yeah. I know what's going on, but I know we're going to lose a lot of characters in that movie. <laughs> we're going to lose a lot yeah, of characters in that movie. You know, I, I haven't really read into that because I don't want to. But, you know, yeah. from what, you know, James Gunn has tweeted and, and said publicly how he's, you know, this is closing the book of the Guardians. And I love the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And just to, to know those characters won't be with us, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be really tough for me to watch because, you know, I, I thought that was such a, you know, with Guardians of the Galaxy, it really was the kind of new new superheroes that you've never have heard of. You would never mm -hmm. have read those comics. You would never yeah, have seen those, those characters. Yeah. And you just fell in love with them. And I hope they do that with another group of, of superheroes or even super villains. Like I hope they do that, but guardians really put something new out into people's lives. And I just, I, I'm just so thankful we got those two movies and now we're going to get the third and it's going to, you know, be the bookend and it, it's, it's going to be tough. I'm going to have to bring tissues with me and I don't know if I'll be able to make it through. One, one more. I'll be uh, like, I'll be like Kyle when he found out panic at the disco panic was, was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Was gone. He's you know, still, I'm, I'm going to be exactly in his. Yeah. He's still just, just holding himself together right now. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll, we've said it before on um, when Kyle and I were talking about like the, the MCU and Marvel and stuff like that. Um, I probably, I, I mean, you are a big comic book guy yourself, but you're more DC side. I'm very much mm -hmm. more the Marvel side. And, and I was talking about how like the Avengers were the biggest, probably second, maybe the second biggest team in Marvel before the MCU and all this stuff, right? In comics, they were the second, mm -hmm. the X-Men was the biggest team in, in Marvel, like by far. Yeah. For and sure. and mm -hmm. the Avengers were kind of like the B-list celebrity. Like even the people in the event, like Captain America was very big. Iron Man was not. The Hulk was. The Hulk was probably right yeah. right behind um, Wolverine mm -hmm. and the Fantastic Four and, and Spider-Man and stuff like that. But like a lot of the people in the Avengers were B-list or lower. And Well, you had Wasp it, in the original one. And like yeah. we didn't get yeah. her until the second Ant-Man. And – but the – what what Marvel did so well, and this is something I think DC kind of fumbled the ball on. They they tried to do like a Justice League with all the best heroes, but if you look at Marvel, I mean, I, we all we all know that the Hulk kind of started it, but that was Iron mm -hmm. Man is what really like locked down the MCU, oh, right? Yeah, Iron Man was like a, a maybe B or C list character in the comics. Mm -hmm. wasn't really anyone's favorite. Now, if you ask people, like Iron Man comes up a lot as people's favorite. Thor yeah. was a good character. A lot of, it was a very, like you either love him or you don't read him at all. Like it was very right. like Norse God. I am powerful. I am Thor. I talk like this. It even wrote it like that. <laughs> like his writing yeah. was different. His writing was godly. 
And mm -hmm. and now again, he's one of people's favorites. You know, like these people, they they took these lower characters, they took risks on them. They didn't do it because they were like, oh, let's take the risk. What is what's the worst that can happen? They did it because they didn't own any of their properties. But they took these risks right. on yeah. these these lower these lower characters, and look how it worked out. And that's why I think they Blue Beetle was announced, and Blue Beetle. Although I'm not going to say he's a low character, it's not Batman, it's not Superman, you know, like, nope. that's what they need to do. They need to build these worlds and they need to build this stuff up. Like, I, it's, that's why the MCU was so successful, because they took these characters. If you fumbled Iron Man, no one was going to be like, I can't believe they fumbled Iron Man. What are they doing? Like, yeah. no one, no yeah. one was going to do that. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a great point. Like, imagine if the DCU they decided they wanted to start off everything with the Titans and gave us, you know, yeah. a, a young Robin, a young wonder girl, a speedy, Great. a cyborg. And you, you already have the hype from the original cartoon. People I was about to say you're going to have the hype from the cartoon and stuff. Like you're yep. going to have an audience that's already and built. You, you'll have nice that audience that. already, but these characters are easy to, to digest this way. You know, they're sidekicks. You know they're they're gonna mess up. They're you know the Titans like the original comics. It, it's all about them kind of messing up in the beginning, and because they're they're kids, they don't know what they're doing, yeah. but they want to get out of the spotlight of their predecessors. So it would be it would have been so cool to see, and that's why I think the Titans TV show, which you know you could love or hate it, I think it did a really good job of introducing these characters in you know live action because. They they are, you know, they're kids and they're, they're trying to find their way in the world. And I think that's such a better story than spitting out the retelling of Superman's origin, the retelling of Wonder Woman's origin, the retelling of Batman's origin, and, and trying to get these huge characters out onto the screen. And then, you know, if, again, like you said, if you kind of fuck up the first Titans movie or, or a spinoff of the Titans, like no one's going to really know. No one's going to, no one's, no one's going to care. care. You know, like, what, it is what it like is. no one's going to care. Fumbled the whole. Yeah, it is what it is. But you could, you could totally build off of them to get to those bigger characters mm -hmm. in, in a bigger That's... universe. And I will love to see that. Think, think of it. The MCU so. is huge. They have Spider-Man finally, right? They still don't have mm -hmm. the Fantastic. Yep. Johnny Blaze is not there. Mr. Fantastic isn't there. Like Wolverine is not there. Like we still don't if, have if, the X Men yet. You don't have any of the like, X Men. If you oof. if you grew up in the nineties or the eighties or anything mm -hmm. before anything before the two thousands, the biggest characters in Marvel: Hulk, Spider Man, Wolverine, Mister Fantastic slash Johnny Blaze, like the whole Fantastic Four, all of the X Men. Doctor Doom was the big bad. Like this is. These were the characters and they didn't own any of them because they went bankrupt and sold them all off so they could stay yep. afloat. And, and now they're finally getting them back, but they built this 10 year dynasty, this Titan with these, with these other characters and DC, that's the page DC needs to take. You don't need to throw, and you also didn't need an origin story for every single, we know Batman's origin story. We know Superman's origin. We know their origin stories. We don't need one for all those characters. Think again nope. of the MCU. We got one for Captain America. You may have known his, but his wasn't like, it's not like Spider-Man. We all know Spider-Man's origin story. It's not like that. Like these characters mm -hmm. that got the origin stories were the ones that needed or like the Guardians of the Galaxy needed an origin story. We would have no idea what was going on there. Like you know the, I mean? the, so. the, the DC, you know, film division, you know, I say Titans, but you know, they, they missed the mark with the Justice Society of America. Because you had, be, prior to any of the Zack Snyder stuff, you know, the Suicide Squad, we had the movie Watchmen come out. No one knew about mm -hmm. those characters. And that is an amazing movie. And that movie is, is beloved by a lot of people. And that was easy. You really didn't know their backstories or anything. They kind of hinted on them here and there through that story. And then it was great. You could have easily done that for the Justice Society of America. You know, put them in World War II America and build off that 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 thought of if superheroes were around, could they come together and fight for a common cause? And if you had them punching Hitler on 
on the big screen, everybody would love it. <laughs> you know, you can't, yeah. you can't, you can't go wrong so. with that. There's yeah. Certain musicians so, that probably wouldn't, but yeah, certain musicians <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but you, you have such a cool thing. And then we got a hint of them in black Adam and it totally took away from the, the greatness of the justice society. If you didn't have the justice society, you wouldn't have gotten the Avengers, the Justice League, the X-Men. That was the first ever team-up superhero group in comic history. And because of them, you got all these great stories from Marvel and DC. And that is such a – just a fumble of the ball to not start with them and give us those characters because those characters all have origins that I – I can guarantee no one knows about. <laughs> I can guarantee no one knows really any of their origins. So it, it's just like, why not just do that? And then you 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 put them, you put a small piece of them in the Black Adam movie, which ended up being just another fumble for DC. I I, I watched it. I I I found it fun in some parts, but it did nothing for me. It just was just like okay, movie. yeah, like and he had like the same look the whole movie like he just didn't change his face i think they just he froze his face and he was just that and then he just and then and then you had you had a a, um a villain who is such is is not even a d-list villain it's like an f-list villain that you don't ever hear about and you're like but that doesn't even go with black adam i i just i don't understand that like it's like what what are we doing, guys? Like, yeah. what, what, the Rock what the fumbled that going completely. On? The Rock fumbled that completely. And by the way, he said he has still face. I don't think he had a line that was more than four to five words. It was all short sentences the entire time because he had to be cool, the coolest guy every single time. And yeah, well, we'll see what goes on with the DCU. I hope they pick it up. And uh, I really, at least their animation is still going strong, right? But we promised everybody a yeah. game, but we're running out of time here. Um, so I think we're going to save the game, but we'll tell people kind of what we're going to do, or should we just save it? Let's just save it completely. Mm -hmm. It'd be a big surprise. You'll have to tune in to the next time yeah. I'm here. So you have to wait a month or maybe they do it while I'm not here. Now you don't even know. Mm -hmm. I have to listen to every episode. Ooh, look at me. Ooh, look at me. I'm the teaser king out here. Mm -hmm. Teaser king out here. <laughs> um, so for, well, let's just say, uh, I was about to just sign right off without telling people you can find us on YouTube at Schnabel Studios, or if you're watching this, you can listen at Schnabel Studios anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also watch on Spotify, which is pretty dope these days. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at Schnabel Studios. We post uh, at least once a week. I'll tell you that. We try to post more than that, though. Um, you can also find us on TikTok at Schnabel Studios. So you can find us all those places. Kyle, you want to say anything uh, leading into your big debut as the solo host? Like, I'm not here to. I'm you're. I'm not here. The training wheels are going to be off. Like, I'm actually. You know what? Take it from here. Close out the show. Just throw them right into the deep end, right? Throw them right into the deep end. Acting like acting like you've never closed the show. Regular, before. regular, it's regular. But nah, man. Like, it's gonna be fun. Me and Matt gonna hold it down. I might bring a friend or two on here. It might get lit, mm -hmm. probably get lit, you know what I'm saying? You know, but hey, that's it for us on sketching up, you know what I'm saying? Follow us on the socials, you know what I'm saying? Matt, socials coming disco. soon, you know what I'm saying? RIP Panic at the disco, you feel me? Like, we out though. Peace. If you love me, let me go. <laughs> <laughs>